Disculpe me for poor, poor English. It's, in a rich, well-documented study, Fernanda Bayer develops a series of extremely important questions around scientific publishing and its evaluation. Quite rightly, Bayer starts with the rising criticisms of the indicators claiming to target impact, which have come to dominate the field of research evaluation. Such indicators, as she rightly points out, focus exclusively on individuals and miss a number of important dimensions in assessing research, for example, the real originality of research in contrast with its popularity and its social relevance. She then moves on to consider the way experts involved in peer review behave and correctly underscores the fact that they often do little more than reflect and or refract the perspective of metrics. In other words, they too rest on the usual metrics, but they cloak them differently. For example, they focus on excellence. We've heard a, a good deal, a good many things about ex excellence a few minutes ago, even though they give highly divergent or even conflicting meanings to this term. This is not surprising as excellence, a bit like the word horizon, depends on the position and the movement of the observer. Excellence can emerge only if a system of competition endowed with specific rules is set up. With a 100 meter dash, there is excellence. With running in general, there is no possibility of excellence. Can there be a possibility of excellence with research in general? Competition may well be the essence for excellence, but why should producing knowledge rely so exclusively on fierce competition? And why should it be strictly defined by quantitative rules? Why collaboration, coordination, and exchange should be relegated to, to the far margins of science? I would argue that the intensity of competition in contemporary science can be accounted for by the commercial competition among journals. In order to obtain market shares for their journals, publishers have managed to transpose journal competition into a highly formalized version of scientific competition driven by the impact factor. Beher then co covers the, the issue of peer review in journals. What is important to note is that before the commercialization of journals, there was an editorial assessment of submitted research, but it was not yet called peer review. Actually, the term itself was promoted by commercial publishers along with its rules to reviewers, blind or even double blind reviews, etc., as a way to market commercial journals by claiming that they, unlike society journals, did not form an old boys club, but on the contrary, strove for an objective form of evaluation. Peer review, in other words, is a construct and should be carefully contemplated with this caveat in mind. Latin America, by attaching itself to journals and books in a fairly traditional way, has hit on similar assessment methods. But the fact that in Latin America, journals and books are still largely under the control of scientific communities and academic environments means that the problems are inherently different from those of the commercial world. In Latin America, effective forms of scientific communication in the last analysis are still more important than the journal form of scientific publishing. I will return to this point a bit later. Perhaps one of the more important passages in Behel's text deals uh, with the encounter of peer review and what is being increasingly known as open science. The reason is quite simple. Open science is a notion that has emerged out of the encounter of scientific communication and publishing with the digital world. Gradually, we are coming to the understanding that journals are a legacy of print. And unless they are seriously conceived again, they will soon be obsolete. In fact, the central role that journals have come to play as commercial objects 
may well be the main reason why they still exist so prominently, but also why there is so little technical progress in scientific publishers, publishing. Publishers do not yet know how to make a lot of money without journals. They try very hard with research workflow surveillance and institutional statistics, but this trend is still in its infancy. In other words, they do not yet know how to invent a transposition of Facebook for research, but this is where they're going. Meanwhile, they stick to journals, more or less. As Behel shows, the journal-based evaluation met metrics have also become the basis for many strange policies in various Latin American countries. Categorization systems of researchers, monetary incentives for publishing in the right place, etc. The impact factor, of course, is a central tool in this area. Lat Latin America is far from having entirely escaped from the scourge of the impact factor and similar metrics. So what should we do? Berhel surveys best practices such as DORA and SPACE and her choices, OPERAS, IAP, ISC, etc., demonstrate that Follett Claxo is pos positioning itself in a very important way in this worldwide debate, and that's very good. Personally, I full, fully support such efforts and they should be pursued, even intensified. I should like, however, to issue a small word, a word of caution regarding these attempts at shaping evaluation differently. If numbers are involved, they invite rankings. The passions fans display for football statistics or any other sports statistics demonstrates that there is something hardwired in human beings that seem to incite them to move towards rankings and to love them. I can only add, beware. Beware not to be trapped again by another competitive game that commercial publishers will use if they can manage to map it onto some dimension that they can make work, make work as if it were a reflection of quality. In other words, do not believe, do not believe that we will solve the evaluation problem simply by getting rid of the impact factor. Behan knows that, and she knows that the issue is more generic and lies deeper than a particular system of evaluation. The issue is to balance competition and collaboration in the processes that lead to validated knowledge and perhaps give back the advantage to collaboration over competition. One amusing way of doing this would be to create forms of competition that measure the degree of collaboration between researchers, research teams, institutions, and even countries. What might complete Behel's analysis is a quick detour through computer science, particularly the art of programming. This was the first form of writing set within the digital milieu from which it emerged, and to this extent, it deserves more notice. Programmers, particularly in the free software context, know that their attempts at writing code will be examined by many and probably replaced or tweaked by someone. They know, therefore, that all they can do is to contribute to a particular version of the software on which they are working. But they also know that the, what is crucial in this process is not to conjure up a final version, it is to keep a close track on versions, including versions leading, leading to new directions, generally known as forking. Scientists are very much in the same position, and some recent platform, like the OR platform of the European Commission, derived from the F1000 research platform designed by Vitek Trash, achieves what is needed, namely the productive yet distributed collaboration of individuals trying to contribute what they can to a work always, always in progress. In passing, the, uh, the European platform needs many improvements, but it's a good start. In that world, there are neither preprints 
all versions of record. There is, however, a strict record of versions, thank you, Bianca Kramer, that monitors the progress of the great conversation. In such a system where the publishing process closely espouses the meanderings of the scientific communication while optimizing the possibilities of either validating or refuting contributions exposed, peer review no longer appears as a separate distinct process from the process of knowledge creation. In short, the kinds of discussions or debates constantly going on inside labs or seminars can now be permanently present in the publishing system. This is what digitization and worldwide networks can help do, and that is where it should go. In such a system, quality simply means surviving the scientific debates. In conclusion, Fernanda Behel offers us a remarkable portrait of not only peer review, but also the positioning of expert reviewer and the kinds of actions they take. She shows how such practices influence scientific communities in Latin America, i.e. in non-hegemonic region of the world. Many endeavors in Latin America contain the germs of what a better future might be like. Latin America stands to being a remarkable leader in this context. And the recent agreement between UNESCO, the Statistical Institute of India, and Ray Dalek testify that this is happening. In the end, the whole issue of peer review will be completely solved when scientific publishing and scientific communication are sufficiently realigned with each other. Muchas gracias.